on that. I'm kind of paranoid with a camera out here. But that that's something right there, and all these all this weird stuff is for the weather weather modification. That is right there. There's the chemical tanks right there and whatever that thing is up there. I am definitely at the right spot. Let's go see. They got a camera on me right there. There's a big old ball on the top. I don't know what that is. Okay, I'm in. Hi. Do you know what a weather modification ink is? Am I? Are you meeting somebody? No, I just, I just kind of want to find out what they do. Yeah, I'll get for you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we are in. Is this their office or? It's back. Yeah. Do they just have a pamphlet on what they're? I'm sorry. What was the? We can visit the website. I know. I've, I've, I've been at the website. I know they say that they're they do weather modification. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, sounds good. Um, I just kind of like to know how they do it. Can you? Um, so they go up, and depending on where they are in the country or the world, they're either um, measuring atmospheric conditions. Mm -hmm. They are trying to reduce hailstorm sizes and thunderstorms right. by use of um, chemicals or whatever they. So they do use chemicals in the air to, to manipulate the weather? As I understand that, yeah. Really? I'm not an expert on it. I mean, I can put you in touch with other people, but, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty okay. neat. And again, they do it, like, I know they've got a contract where they've actually made it rain in Africa. They, there's, this place has. Mm -hmm. So they have contracts all over the world. Okay. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. Yeah, as well. It's been in business for a couple of years. Well over a decade now. You think, do you think any of them would talk to me on camera? Doing documentary? Possibly. I can push you in. Yeah, can you? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Oregon and okay. went all across the United States talking to people about different things. This is one of them. Okay. About uh, weather manipulation. <laughs> weather modification, whatever. Okay, you heard all that. They're coming down to talk to me. Are you one of the pilots that does the weather model? Yep. Oh, sure. Now, can you, would you like, can you be in a video of me? I'm doing a documentary about what you guys do. Can okay. you just tell me what you do? I can't I be think. in a video until I get approved by somebody else. Oh, you gotta get approved. Yeah. Get, okay, I'm only here for like a couple hours. I can't, actually came from, well not came from working to do this place, but I'm passing through. Okay. And I, it, it intrigues me that you guys, oh. what you do. Uh, Fly yeah. through thunderstorms. So is that what you do? Yep. So you fly an airplane that has a chemical attachment thing to Yep. We drop. use silver eye that. Silver eye that. Yeah. And it's and the reason we use it it's inert, it's environmentally safe. Right. And the amount we're using over the area you use, you'll never find it in the back. Right. You know. Um, no, what, but, what it, but it burns and it's a, when it burns, it burns into a crystal form. Mm -hmm. It looks just like an ice crystal. So when right. you put it in a cloud, the water says, hey, it's one of my own and it attaches to it and freezes. Okay, so it makes so it makes clouds basically. No, it makes ice. Oh, so it makes ice. Yeah, the cloud already has to be there. The water has to be there. Right. So the ingredients have to be there, but sometimes the ingredients are there, and in the natural process, it doesn't multiply and get going, so then nothing comes out in the rain, the snow, whatever. Right. So are there, is there currently projects going on in the United States right now? Yep. We there have a project in North Dakota for rainfall enhancement. Hail mitigation. Really? Minimizing the effects of hail. We have one in Calgary. So you, you can stop hail, is what you're saying? Minimize the effects. Minimize the effects of hail. Yeah. Make it small. Yeah. But so can you can you cause uh, it not to rain too? No. Yeah, not my not. experience. So, so but the Chinese yeah. say they can. I don't know that they can. Yeah, yeah, because the, the Olympics. The Olympics, yeah. right. So you know about that. Yeah. They said they stopped the rain. Yeah, well. So we, we haven't perfected that in the United States? No. Or you guys haven't? 
Well, we haven't. I don't think anybody has. In right. the world, the Chinese say they do, but scientifically, when they explain it, it doesn't make sense. Right. So, so when you get your when you get your orders, mm -hmm. you just fly where they tell you to fly, right? For the most part. I mean, we're when we're working, we're on a contract with somebody, a state government, a state entity, a foreign government, right? Or a water district, you know, that has hired us. So we have an area that we can only fly in. Right. So whatever, 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 area, whatever, whatever your whatever your project area. Is. Right. And so you get you get contracts from the United States government, right? No. Nope. Oh, you don't. No. Nope. But other gov governments, uh, uh, other countries. Yeah, like counties, like North Dakota. There are four counties that get together, vote uh -huh. on it, levy their taxes, and then the state, through the state of the of North Dakota, they also get a little bit of funding. I think it's like ten percent. Really. And then that's it. Then they they pay for it themselves. Um, so the county, like, the county, the state the county, government pays for it. The counties pay for it by by voting on it and levying mills. Really? To get taxes, yeah. There. Wow. Now some places, a water district, they'll take their, I don't know where their money comes from exactly, but like a watershed area. Right. And they'll take probably taxes as well, and they'll set it up, vote on it, yep, we're going to do this project. So some the, places are power companies, like hydro water companies, they'll pay for it themselves. Right. And Calgary, an insurance company pays for it. So I saw a, a thing out there. You have the lime ones too. The, the yep. That yep. one out there that's, that I saw in the parking lot. Yep, that's for um, uh, for snowpack in the mines. Really? Yeah. So is there other? other we things? got contracted in Sacramento. Oh, you did down there for, but that's for snowpack up near Tahoe. Right. To, to make it snow more, get more snow. Yeah. Right? So that their watersheds and their their water levels will fill up. Yeah. So silver iodide, that, that's what you guys use? That's the yeah. only thing you guys use? Yep. Okay. All right, that, that's great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate um, it. If you want more technical information yeah, what can about you get? it, like science stuff, I can give you, this is our scientist. Okay. Bebo. I just happen to have one, so I thought I'd bring it. But uh, his right. name is Bruce Bow. And, and this is not a website? Yep. And that's his email. You can email him, tell him who you are, and you're looking for some information. Give you the scientific technical information. Okay. That uh, if you're looking for that kind of stuff. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I will uh, definitely be running around here. Okay. Thanks. 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 Well, I can, I can. These, these guys are taking a radar down and changing it out. So. Is this your radar on top here? Yeah. Oh, so that's for you guys. This yeah. one here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right, I hope you heard all that because he just got done telling me they're doing it for sure, for real. He's a pilot. Hi everyone, I just wanted to touch base with you real quick. Again, I'm always touching base with you. Thank goodness none of y'all had faces for real. Silver iodide, just real quick on this video, I want to go ahead and make sure that everybody understands the definition and forgive the dog in the background here. We'll, we are real people with real radio. Silver iodide is an inorganic compound with the formula AGL. The compound is bright yellow solid, but samples almost always contain impurities of metallic silver that give a gray coloration the silver contamination arises because agl is highly photosensitive okay they're putting this stuff in the clouds now that you know that which is way up there by the sun right a lot closer to the sun than we are okay so this property is exploited in silver-based photography silver iodide is also used as an antiseptic in in cloud seeding okay so the structure adopted by silver iodide you can look this up on wiki actually everybody can do that you need me to uh, just tell you all that stuff. But here we go. If you look at, here's all your chemical properties and your identifiers, etc. The structure, thermochemistry, safety data sheet, which I'm about to go into next, um, flashpoint, and, and etc. Okay, it is very important that everybody knows what they're breathing. I mean, you wouldn't smoke a cigarette. If you're not a smoker, you would not smoke a cigarette, right? 
you would have informed consent. You know that cigarettes not good for you, smoking is not good for you, so you wouldn't smoke a cigarette. But you have no choice in the matter of cloud seeding or weather modification, chemtrails, whatever you want to call that, okay? Material safety data sheet, it doesn't cover this one thing. So I will have to Google it. So watch this. We shall do that in just a moment here. Silver iodide. I'm showing you how I do research, folks. Okay, you get to see a little bit of my brain here again. Silver iodide, MSDS. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and pull that up. PDF, M MSDS for silver iodide. We're going to see how dangerous or not dangerous it is. Here we go. Reactivity, health, it's a two. Okay, so what you do. Let's go on down here. Composition, hazards, identification, potential acute health effects. In case of skin contact, it's an irritant, eye contact, irritant, ingestion, or inhalation, which we will be doing if they're putting it in the sky and spraying us with it. Carcinogenic effects means not, they say not available. What that means is that they're not looking. Okay. Mutagenic effects, again, not available. I don't think they're looking at it. They're, if you think about it for 20 years, if you're breathing this stuff up, what's going to happen so the first aid measures wash with water so with serious contact skin contact what does that mean it's like if you take a dive, if you dive into the vat of it i'm suppose i'm supposing that's what they mean by serious skin contact antibacterial cream which is interesting so what this tells me is that this stuff is going to remove any antibacterial properties that your skin has, basically that, and seek medical attention. Inhalation, allow the victim to rest in a well-ventilated area. Um, serious in inhalation, not available. I don't know why. Indigest or ingestion, <laughs> indigestion, yeah, I'll give you that. But anyway, don't induce vomiting. If the victim's not breathing, of course, perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Duh. Some of this stuff is silly, but anyway. Risk of explosion of the product in presence of mechanical impact, not available. Really? Risk of explosion of the product, presence of static discharge, again, not available. Accidental release measures. Use proper, appropriate tools to put, put the spilled solid in the convenient waste disposal container, finish by cleaning and spreading water on the contaminated surface, and dispose of according to local and regional authority requirements. Use a shovel. It's a <laughs> We're going to use a shovel to shovel the crap that they've been giving us. Anyway, don't, embre don't ingest. Do not breathe the dust. Well, they're just spraying it up in the clouds, and when the cloud, when those clouds do rain or the ice does come down, guess what? This, that water evaporates again, and guess what? We're breathing in the dust. Too much not availables, and this stuff has been present in our in our environment for quite some time. But there's your material safety data sheet. This does this is nothing near as bothersome to me as the stinking thimerosal, for instance. We've done things about thimerosal. That's really toxic. That's really bad. But there's not very much on this. Don't breathe it in, it says. Don't breathe it in. They're spraying it in the air. Imagine that. So you can imagine why I'm a little bit perturbed about this. I, ex I ask everybody to exercise due caution. More importantly, what I'm really impressed about is the citizen journalism that's going on with this man. What he did and how he did it. He didn't go in there and present himself as an activist. What he did is he went in there, surreptitiously had his phone on record. You can tell that he was, he just had his phone on record and he was recording everything that was going on. He even managed to get the building number. He didn't put the street number and things like that on there, but that's okay. He got the building number, got people's names, got this information. Citizen journalism, this is what it's about, folks. This is what we have, where it has come down to now. We must do it ourselves because the mainstream media is not going to talk about it. They're not going to talk about it unless they are permitted to. Those who do talk about such things that are sensitive to the mainstream media and the powers that are controlling all of this stuff. Look at Ben Swan. He's not on CBS Atlanta anymore. He's talked about a lot of different topics that we in the alternative media talk about. They got rid of him because we loved him because he's on mainstream media talking about the same stuff that we're talking about. And that's what they're supposed to be doing is exposés. They're supposed to be exposing all this thing. That's why they have freedom of the press. This freedom of the press was not so that they can echo the government line or echo the corporate line. That's not what freedom of the press is for. Freedom of the press is to say whatever the heck you want to and publish a Bible if you want to. That's it. You're allowed to do that. And it's up to the free market, the people who buy, the people who, who consume, if you will, this material, that, this material that you want. It's up to you to support them. That's what freedom of the press is. 
And then we also have the social censorship. And that's where people get on Twitter, Facebook, they get shadow banned. Now, those of you who don't know what shadow banning is, uh, look it up, okay? Or I'll do another video in the future. I'm not sure which. Whatever happens first. How's that? Okay. Anyway, I love you guys. I, got, I just wanted you to see this and know what's going on. This is real citizen journalism right here. Congratulations to the fellow who did it. I have no idea who did it. Okay. I just saw the video, downloaded it, thought I'd upload it again for y'all. I love all of you. I love everybody who's got the balls to go out there and do the right thing. Bravo. Find your quantum connections at truthfrequencyradio.com.